much, Anna, for introducing us uh, to the uh, example of some local market, um, which kind of made very clear to all of us um, this new relationship, uh, rural urban, but also the community sense and the, let's say, reclaim the food as a commons. Um, I have a question before we open to all of you, uh, to the three panelists, um, because you all have been presenting, let's say, very local models. Um, Local models that uh, create new or revive old uh, relations of solidarity, connections between the rural and urban areas, uh, but also within the communities. And um, somehow this access to what we say would, should be a common good, but also, I mean, also the access to finance, the access to food, to the concept of food sovereignty, the relationship to nature, uh, under the um, idea of the commons, uh, raises hope to be an alternative uh, to the narrative of the neoliberal or capitalist development model. But as these examples all exist locally, uh, we were wondering and pre-discussing kind of how could these local models also serve as examples or counter-narratives uh, to go to neoliberalism, which we perceive and experience as a very kind of uh, global phenomenon or threat. Um, I would go vice versa, maybe ask Anna first to answer if that's okay, and then uh, the others can answer. Each of you, one minute, be precise and sharp, please. Para responder rápidamente, creo que eh, un poco el desafío, si bien ese es un ejemplo local, probablemente el reto, y creo que estar en Barcelona es maravilloso para eso, es mirar de qué manera determinadas redes locales que vemos, vemos como procesos de lucha específicos, sí, cierto tipo de migraciones africanas, cierto tipo de problemáticas que articulamos desde la izquierda, pero que no vemos como redes culturales y económicas, que finalmente... Eh, en el momento en que se entiende en la dinámica sistémica de la ciudad y que logran incidir en las políticas públicas ¿no? qué cantidad de vendedores ambulantes o informales en Barcelona son reprimidos y finalmente qué rol pueden, te, tienen o pueden llegar a tener porque tampoco tenemos data el rato que recogemos y el rato que articulamos las luchas probablemente podemos incidir en la política pública y probablemente podemos generar condiciones de soberanía para determinados temas Uh, I actually think uh, it's, uh, or I would uh, approach the question from the other way. I think it's only the local level when it comes to Syria that could actually in, uh, in any way bring uh, social justice to, uh, to the people of Syria. And why is this really important? Because the social injustice we had besides the political oppression was one of the main reasons why people actually initially rose up against uh, the regime. So what is quite uh, important and which is completely missing um, or almost completely missing amongst the global left is actually an analysis of the, um, of the economic structure of the Syrian regime itself. So um, actually looking at what produced social injustice in the first place in Syria. And um, we had a crony capitalist system in Syria before and due to the war and the war economy that has developed, it actually got worse. So um, if we do not support these local structures that could actually tackle the question of um, injustice, we will have a much bigger problem in Syria in the future. And uh, I also say this because right now the discourse of reconstructing Syria is quite, uh, or uh, becomes quite uh, dominant. And um, I assume, unfortunately, um, if we do not make the narrative of the local communities and how they were actually uh, constructing uh, food, serenity, food serenity networks um, on the ground, if we do not strengthen this narrative, I, um, I think that then uh, the reconstruction will just uh, support these really unjust um, structures of the Syrian regimes and uh, all the other powers that uh, by today have interest uh, in Syria. Um, in uh, Kenya, I think we're seeing a people who uh, formerly did not have any say or any role in uh, as far as access to finance is concerned. And we're seeing, we're becoming, we're beginning to see a people who are getting, becoming fed up of the system that will not include them in the decision making of our, you know, things like budgetary allocations in counties and municipalities. 
And so we're also beginning to, beginning to see people who are taking charge of their economic future and coming up with these alternatives to make sure that they get access to all these things that are supposed to be uh, common in our society. Um, you know, for example, finance and, and uh, uh, even power solutions where, I mean, electricity solutions in where there's a huge uh, monopoly of, of uh, the, you know, the big companies, big private companies which uh, uh, provides electricity, which is very expensive. And they are becoming more um, uh, uh, innovative in the way that they are starting to provide electricity for, them, for themselves, for example, by using their own solar uh, energy. So we're seeing uh, communities that are not looking, they're no longer looking at the government for help, but they're starting to rethink of ways that they can um, come up with innovations.